407, number 15, is that right? So let's put it over here on page 407, number 15, and let's see what the question says. If y is inversely proportional to x, how does y change when x is double? Okay, very good. Now let's then take the first part of that, which says if y is inversely proportional to x, and give me a sentence, uh, an algebraic sentence, which will interpret that. Brenda? Y equals m over x. All right, y is equal to m over x, is that right? Y is inversely proportional to x. Of course, uh, the number m cannot be zero, is that right? Now, how does y change? Hmm? And of course, also in this case, x cannot be equal to zero, is that right? Very good. Hmm? M cannot, well, now let's see now. If we had m to be equal to zero, we would have zero over x, which is equal to zero, and of course, y is equal to zero would then not be an inverse variation, all right? So perhaps we should have included this restriction on m in addition to the one on x. Very good, Tom. I'm glad that you mentioned that. All right, now, let's see. If we then thought of this as some y sub 1 as m over x, okay? Let me just keep this as a variable x. And now let me think in terms of some y sub 2 as m over now, what must we do to x here? What must we uh, think of this? We must double it, is that right? So let's think of this in terms of 2x. Now, let's look at y sub 1 and y sub 2, and what's the relationship between those two? What then can you say? Well, let me rewrite this in terms of like 1 half of m over x, using this notation, all right? Now, y sub 1 is m over x, and y sub 2 is a half of m over x, so my question is, what's the relationship between y sub 1 and y sub 2? And what can you say? Y, see? <coughs> y sub 2 is what? Is, uh, half one. is half of y sub 1. Is that right? And the question is, how does y change when x is doubled? And how does y change? Y is, Brenda, yeah. half of what it was initially. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Are there any other questions about anything? Good. Let's go on into today's lesson. And notice the name of the lesson is called joint and combined variation. All right, so what we're going to do today is to look at two other types of variation. Now, before we do that, what I'd like to do is to come back and say a few more words about each of the types of variations that we have already considered. And let's come back and look at direct variation. Of course, if I say y varies directly as x, everybody can look at that and interpret it as how? How may we write a, uh, a sentence? Bob says y equals m of x. Y is equal to m times x. Let's include that restriction on m that I indicated on the homework in which m cannot be equal to zero, okay? And in fact, let's include this in a box to indicate it as one of our statements that we feel is quite important. Let me call this one number one. Now, I think because of the examples that I have been doing on the board and because of the way in which we are thinking in terms of y varies directly as x, one gets the impression that this direct variation is always going to be a linear function. And what I'd like to do is perhaps an example or two. Well, let's think in terms of a, uh, a sphere, all right, in which we have a radius here of r. And perhaps you don't remember the formula. Does anyone remember the formula for the volume of the sphere? Has anyone ever uh, thought about the formula for the volume of the sphere, Ron? Three fourths pi r squared. Well, not quite. Three fourths pi r squared, Steve? Uh, H pi r squared. Uh, well, I think if you think in terms of the volume, it's going to be a number of four thirds pi r cubed. cubed. Okay. Four thirds pi r cubed. All right. Now, four thirds pi is really a constant, isn't it? That's just some number, which is a constant. And we may think of this in terms of V is M R cubed, where M is not zero, okay? Which in this case happens to be 4 thirds pi. Or in fact, using the variables Y and X, we may think of Y is equal to M X cubed. And here we can say that Y varies directly as the cube of X, okay? And it's still a direct variation, all right? Where of course M still cannot be equal to zero. So here's a case in which we may think of a direct variation in which it is not linear, okay? Let's look then at, a, uh, at another type of variation that uh, is part of today's lesson, all right? And that has to do with what is called joint variation. Now, actually, 
The idea of a joint <laughs> variation is a very simple one. If I were to say z varies directly, all right, z varies directly as x and y, all right? z varies directly as x and y. In fact, I'm implying that z varies directly as the product of x and y, all right? If I were to think in terms of that statement, what then is an algebraic statement which we can use to interpret that, all right? z varies directly as the product of x and y may be written how? What may we say? z is equal to, Kirby? M, m times x times y, where m, of course, is not equal to zero, okay? And here is a statement that relates to that kind of variation which we are calling joint variation, okay? And notice here that it's in terms of the product of these two. Now, let me take another example. Again, perhaps this will be an algebraic example. Suppose I were to make a figure here, which looks like a, uh, a what we think of as a right circular cylinder, in which the radius here is r, and this height here is h. And does anyone happen to remember the formula for the volume of this figure? And Well, I think in terms of, say, you may think of it as the area of the base times the height. And so volume is equal to, now what's the area of a, of a base? In this case, it's a circle. Pi and Chip says pi r, pi r squared. So there's pi r squared times the height, which in this case is what? H. It's h. Now again, pi is a constant. So we may think in terms of v is, in this case, what? m r squared h. Or in fact, if I were to use the letters z and x and y, we may think of z is m x squared times y. And which here we have, z varies jointly, all right, as the product of x squared and y. And is one way in which one may interpret this. Or simply, z varies uh, directly as the product of x squared and y implies a joint variation, okay? Now, let's look at a third case that we are familiar with, in which we have already talked about inverse variation, all right? And when we talked about inverse variation, we said what? Y varies what? Inversely, is that right? Inversely as X. And when we said that statement, what then is our, our algebraic statement, which, we, which is equivalent to it? Jane says? Y is equal to M over X. Y is equal to M over X, okay? Where, of course, in this case, again, let's just include the case where M is not zero and we know that x cannot be equal to zero because it's in the denominator, okay? And let me include this statement in the box to indicate uh, our basic relationship of an inverse variation, okay? Again, let me turn to a, uh, to a geometric situation in which I would like to develop another case in which we have something like this. Suppose we have a cone here what we think of as a right circular cone, <coughs> and which here is our radius r, say, and this is a height h. Now, does anyone happen to remember the volume for the uh, for a uh, right circular cone, Todd? One-third times the area. Right. Volume is equal to one-third the area of the base, where that is what? Pi r, pi r squared times h, times the height, okay? Now, suppose I happen to know the volume. Oh, let me just take some number for the volume here. For example, suppose I took 2 pi as a value for the volume, okay? It's equal to 1 third pi r squared h. And now let's then, uh, 1 third pi is a constant, is that right? So if we were to divide both sides by pi, there's a name for 1. And if we were to multiply both sides by 3, we have on the left side what? 2 times 3, which is what? 6 is equal to r squared h, is that right? Now let me think in terms of dividing through both sides by r squared. And turning the whole thing around, we have what? h is equal to what? In this case, 6 over r squared, all right? Now, again, here's a case of h varies inversely as the square of r, okay? As the square of r. If I were to use the letters of, uh, say, y and x, what then may we say here? We may write what? Y is equal to, let's think in terms of M over X. And in this case, our pattern indicates what? X squared. So we may interpret this as Y varies inversely as the square of X, okay? Where, of course, again, M cannot be equal to zero. All right? So here's a situation in which we may think in terms of an inverse variation 
which is perhaps not simply uh, m over x, and it's still an inverse variation. All right. Let's then think of a uh, of a, another type of variation, which we now will call combined variation. All right. And combined variation is simply another method of talking of interpreting an, an English sentence into an algebraic <coughs> sentence, in which suppose we had something like z varies directly, all right, directly as x and inversely, all right, inversely as y. And here z varies directly as x and inversely as y may be interpreted how algebraically. What do you think we can say about that? And does anyone have any ideas? Well, let's just take it uh, one step at a time. z varies directly as x may be written how? We've already said what that is. What z equals m, well, directly as x, z equals m times x, and inversely as y, what? Then what would you say, Brenda? m times 1 over y. All right, m times 1 over y. All right, so then if we think in terms of z varies directly as x, let's then think of m times x divided by, now instead of talking about, say, another m, of which would then give us an m squared, that's just another constant, isn't it? So let's just call it m over m times x divided by what? And inversely as y would be divided by y, where here in this case, m cannot also be equal to 0, OK? So here then is a situation in which we may think in terms of what we call a combined variation, in which it combines both a direct variation and an inverse variation, OK? If I call this one number 1, in fact, we may also think in terms of uh, for example, we, we don't necessarily have to have uh, simply y to the 1 power here. Suppose I asked you to, to give me a sentence which would say something like a varies directly as b and inversely as the square of c. And who then can write that as, a, uh, as an algebraic sentence here? a varies directly as b and inversely as the square of c. And uh, who can say something about that? Steve? A equals mb over c squared. All right, a is equal to, let me use m times b over c squared. All right, where again here m cannot be equal to zero. All right, in which we then have a uh, combined variation in this case. Okay? Let's then go on and look at a couple of examples. Suppose I were to uh, call this idea e in which we have here a situation, the volume V of a right circular cone varies jointly as its height H and the square of its radius R. When the height is 9 feet and the radius is 2 feet, the volume is 12 pi cubic feet. Find the volume in terms of pi when the height is 7 feet and the radius is 3 feet. Okay? There are a lot of words there and a lot of ideas, but take it one step at a time and I think it will fall apart very easily. Now let's read the first sentence again. The volume V of a right circular cone varies jointly as its height H and the square of its radius R. Now let's come back here and think about these four types of variation, and we're talking about the product of two variables. So of these four types, which one are we talking about? Is it a direct variation, or is it joint, or is it inverse, or is it combined? And Sally says, it's a joint variation. Z varies directly as X and Y, as the product of the two. Is that right? So let's then come back here. The volume V of a right circular cone varies jointly as its height H and the square of its radius R may be interpreted how? Let's let Z, well, there we have V is the volume, and H <coughs> is the height, and R is the radius. Who then has a sentence which will interpret this? All right, V varies jointly as the height h and the square of the radius r may be interpreted, Kirby says? V equals h times r, h times r squared. All right. Well, we need a, a constant of variation in there, so let's throw in what? M. What shall we include there, Chip? M. Let's include an m, all right? So it's m times, let me talk about r squared h, if I may, all right? The square of the radius times the height, all right? Now, again, just as we use subscript notation, uh, in our other lesson, let's do the same thing here. Therefore, for a particular value of the volume, let's call it V sub 1, we have m times, there is indeed a particular value of the radius squared. Now, the notation here, you have to be careful of this. R sub 1 is then all squared, okay, times h sub 1. 
And for another value of the volume, okay, we'll have what? M times, now it's the same constant M of variation, times what? There is some other radius, R sub 2, and what are we going to do with that? Square. Square times what? H sub 2, okay? Now, let's get both of these statements equal to M. So in order to get it equal to M, what must we do to both sides here of this equation? We don't want to have R squared H here, so what then can we do to both sides? We're multiplying, so let's undo that. Todd says... Divide by R squared H. All right, divide by R squared H. In this case, we'll have V sub 1 divided by R sub 1 squared times H sub 1. Is that right? Is equal to... M. What? Is equal to M. And over here we have V sub 2, right, divided by what? R sub 2 squared times H sub 2 is equal to M. M. All right? And here we have if A is equal to M, and if B is equal to M, therefore what is your conclusion about, Jane says, A is, A is equal to B. Therefore, what then can we say here? We have what? V sub 1 over R sub 1 squared times H sub 1 is what? Is equal to, and what may we say here on the right-hand side? Chip? V sub 2. V sub 2. R, R sub 2 squared. Divided by R sub 2 squared times H sub 2. All right. Now, notice in this case, we have one, two, three, four, five, six numbers to consider, of which in our data, we should have how many given to us? We should have how many of those numbers given to us? Five, okay? And therefore, we can easily find the sixth. Well, let's just go ahead and, and make a substitution. Let's come back to our problem. When the height is nine feet, okay? Well, let's then look here at, uh, say, the H sub 1 is nine feet, all right? and the radius is 2 feet. Now that's r sub 1, that's the radius, so let's then call that 2 squared, that's 2, is that right, r sub 1 squared. All right, the volume is 12 pi. Well, that then gives us a value there of 12 pi. All right, is equal to, now it says find the volume in terms of pi, well that's v sub 2 that, that we do not know, all right, all right, divided by when the height is 7 feet, all right, there's a height of 7 feet, and the radius is 3 feet. So what then do we want to say here? <coughs> three three squared. squared. Okay. Now we're interested in solving for V sub 2. All right? So V sub 2 then is equal to what? Well, there's 12 pi times 3 squared is 9, nine times 7 divided by what? Four, four times what? Nine. Times 9. Now, of course, 9 over 9 is the name for one. 1. 12 over 4 is the name for 3. 3, three times 7 is? 21, and we still have what? 21 pi. pi. All right, so we have 21 pi. Therefore, our conclusion is what? The volume, the volume is what? 21 pi. Now, what is our unit of measure here? 21 pi, what are we talking about? Cubic, what? Cubic feet, okay? Cubic feet, and there's our conclusion, okay? Let's go on and look at another example. Here we have the illumination I received by an object varies directly as the intensity I of the light source and inversely as the square of the distance D from the light source. All right, let's stop there and see if we can't interpret that sentence, shall we? Now again, here we have a, an illumination I received by an object varies directly as its intensity I and inversely as the square of the distance, all right? So let's then come back here to our four types of variation in which we have a direct variation or a joint or inverse or combined. Now, of these four, what are we talking about here, Steve? Combined. It's a combined variation, which Z varies directly as X and inversely as Y. Is that right? All right, now let's then come back to our problem here. And here we have our variables of I and little i and D, all right? So the illumination I, all right, varies, what then are we told? It varies directly as the intensity little i. So who then can interpret that algebraically? But m, I. m times little i, all right? And inversely is the square of the distance d. And what then can you say? Over d squared. Over d squared. <coughs> Everybody agree with that? In which this then is our sentence. Now again, just as we did in example one, let's include some subscript notation. For a particular value of its illumination, let's call it I sub 1, we have what? M times little i sub 1 divided by what? V sub 1 
squared, all right? And then, of course, for some other value of little i and d, we have what? Some i sub 2, some other illumination, which we will write what? m times what? i sub 2 divided by d sub 2 squared, okay? Therefore, again, let's do the same thing and get them both equal to m. So here we have what? i sub 1 times what? Well, here we, we're multiplying both sides by d sub 1 squared, so what then do we have there? Times d sub 1 squared divided by what? Little i sub 1 is equal to m, and also we have what? i sub 2 times what? d sub 2 squared divided by i sub 2 is equal to m. Therefore, finally, again, if a is equal to m, and if b is equal to m, our conclusion is, Sally, a is equal to b. Therefore, what? i sub 1 times b sub 1 squared divided by little i sub 1 must be equal to i sub 2 times b sub 2 squared divided by little i sub 2. Okay? Now again, let's look at our variable. We have here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 numbers of which we should know what? Five. Should know 5. If we don't know 5, by the way, if we only know 4, for example, you cannot solve for a particular number, but you'll probably then end up with one variable in terms of that other one that you don't know, okay? Well, let's come back to our data and see what it says. If an object three feet from a light source, all right? So let's then work here with uh, d sub 1 is what number? Three. Three, all right? So that's three squared. All right, time from a light source of five candles, that's the unit of measure that we have for a light source, is five candles. So what then is that number? That's the intensity i, little i, is that right? So what then we have here where? Five, five in, the, in the denominator, divided by five, is that right? Has an illumination, capital I, of 20 foot candles. So what then is, uh, capital I here is what number? 20. Times 20, okay? Is equal to, now let's come back to the question, what is the illumination, that's capital I, if the object is, all right, so we want to find this capital I sub 2 times, if the object is what? It's 2 feet from the same light source. So d sub 2 is what number? It's 2, so it's 2 squared divided by the same light source, which is what? 5, all right? Notice what we have here. We have, a, say, a light bulb here that has 5 candles, all right? And here we have an object, which is, first of all, what? Uh, uh, how many feet away? The first case is what? three feet away, and it has some intensity of 20 foot candles. And when we bring it closer, right, is that right? What should then the illumination be? Should you think it's going to be a number which is bigger or smaller than 20? Bigger. Well, yeah, bigger. All right, well, let's see what exactly what number it is, all right? So we're interested in solving here for i sub 2. Well, let's just look at this, multiply both sides by 5, and let's also divide by 2 squared, which is 1. So we have i sub 2 then is equal to, is 20 times 9 divided by what number? 2 uh, squared, four. which is Eight. what? Four. Four. 4. Okay, is equal to, and of course 20 over 4 is 5, and 5 times 9 is 45, and there is our number i sub 2. Therefore, our conclusion is what? The illumination, the illumination is what? is 45, and what's our unit of measure there? 45 foot candles, okay. 45 foot candles of illumination, okay? Let's go on and look at a last example, and I think that's all that we need to do for today. Here we have if z varies directly as x, <coughs> and inversely the square of y, and x is doubled when y is halved, by what factor is z multiplied? This is similar to the uh, problem that we had for homework that Kirby asked about. So let's then come back here and say, and <coughs> interpret this sentence algebraically. If z varies directly as x and inversely the square of y, who then can give us an algebraic statement for that, a sentence for that statement? Brenda? Z is equal to? Z is equal to? M, M times x divided by y squared. Does everyone agree with that? Okay. Z varies directly as X and inversely as the square of Y. Now, let's call this one a particular value of Z. Let's decide to call it Z sub 1 just as we did in the homework problem, okay? Now, 
Let's talk then about some other value, call it z sub 2. Now what then are we going to do to x? We want to do what? x is doubled. So there's m times, instead of writing the original x, let's double it, which is 2x, divided by, and y is halved. So there's one half of y all squared. Is that right? All right. Now let's see what effect that gives us here. There's 2mx, is that right, in the numerator? Now one half squared, of course, is what? There's one fourth y squared. Now what's 2 divided by one fourth? 2 divided by a fourth is what number? 8. Is that right? So there we have 8mx divided by y squared. In fact, let me write the 8 out front and have left m times x divided by y squared. Now let's compare. This is z sub 2. Now z sub 2 is 8 times mx over y squared. z sub 1 is simply 1 times mx over y squared. So the question is, by what factor is z multiplied? By what factor is it originally multiplied by? And of course, it's what number? It is, uh, Brenda says, 8 by 8, all right? So our conclusion is, by what factor is z multiplied? We, what, what can we say? z is multiplied by what? Multiplied by 8, or simply, z is 8 times as great, okay? Let me give you your homework assignment for next time, and that's all that we need to do.